Hello and welcome everybody. My OS is Apron and today on Guide to Hacker, I'm going to be helping you decide what OS to choose, right? What's the best operating system for a hacker like you and me out there right now? So let's get started here with the refresher of the real meaning of hacker. And if you haven't already, watch my video. The link will be in the description below. It will give a more in-depth explanation of what a hacker actually is. But just to go over it, it's a person who accomplishes a goal by doing anything other than what the original creator intended it to do. Right? Make it work for you. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen. That is all. But moving on, let's look at the OS operating systems that we have available. Right, We have Windows. This is the operating system that you're probably watching this video on right now. And this is the, or this is the operating system you have began with, started your computer journey with. Right, Windows is widely used. Everybody uses Windows or have used Windows before. It's very, very easy. A lot of the applications are for Windows. And it is unavoidable for hacking. Let me repeat that. It is unavoidable for hacking. You will have to know the ins and outs, the command line, vulner past vulnerabilities that can lead you up to new vulnerabilities discovered, and etc. Right? This does not mean you have this has to be your main operating system. It just means you have to know about Windows, right? There's virtualization out there. And there's different uh, articles on Windows and stuff like that. So you do not have to you know make this your main operating system. You just have to know about it and have it available, right? Moving on, we have Mac. Now Mac is avoidable. But a good hacker, right, a very, very good hacker should know about Mac because it does happen where those home users do have Mac or the business, they might have Mac, which is very unlikely even, but it's just preparing yourself for that. And, you know, you get, you get a job and they all have Mac and you don't know what you're doing. Man, that's going to be a tough time. You know, I wish I would have learned Mac, you know, but I've avoided it. Just because I don't, I don't think I'm an expert yet on Windows or Linux yet. I still have a lot to learn, many, many things to learn before I'm comfortable with adding another whole different operating system on something I have to know about, right? So it is avoidable to some extent. So if you're starting out, I wouldn't worry about Mac. But know that if you want to be a very successful hacker, you will have to know about the ins and outs of Mac. And I want to get out of the way the less viruses uh, debate kind of thing. So it is true, but it is not true. It's true to the point that it gives up to its name, right? Less viruses. Of course that's true because more people are using Windows. So most of the virus writers will target the mass population, right? They want to infect the most people. They want to cause the most chaos. They're, of course, going to use Windows. If, Mac, if everyone was using Mac... It would be flip-flopped so there are less viruses but that doesn't mean you're safe it doesn't mean there's no exploits vulnerabilities or viruses on the internet that can't destroy your PC there are vulnerabilities for Linux and Mac so just getting that out of the way moving on let's go on to the Linux operating systems right now Linux seems to be the main hacking system right it seems like you know, if you're a hacker, oh, you got to use Linux. And that's not true at all, right? You have to make it work for you. If Windows is your thing, that's fine. You can virtualize Linux. But I just want to go over some of the characteristics that Linux has. And you can still run Windows on Linux. Right. So you can run Windows on Linux and Linux on Windows. But most Linux operating systems are free and open source. They're very... Like Debian Ubuntu is very stable. They have their own package managers. And, you know, Linux applications are compatible with Debian and Ubuntu. Um, so that's the characteristics of Debian Ubuntu. Fedora, it's very, very inclined towards security features. So you're, it's, it's more, I think it's more safe to be on Fedora. But there are vulnerabilities and exploits, but less. It's good software co compatibility, and it's strict open source and free. 
which I very much like that. Even though I've never personally dived into Fedora, I've had explored around, and I did kind of like it, but then I moved on, right? It didn't catch my eye at first or moving on. But OpenSUSE is another one popularly used, right? It's very, very easy with its configuration. It's a large repository of tools. I checked out their documentation recently. It's very well, well written, so going into OpenSUSE will not be hard at all. Um, same with Debian and Ubuntu. They have very good documentation, but OpenSUSE is just incredible. Um, but the one that I use and the one I am recommending is Arch Linux. Arch Linux is a base system. You will not have a graphical interface. You're working off a terminal to start off with, installing everything from your bootloader to your desktop environment to configuring your time zone on a terminal. I bet you didn't know how to do that, right? You'd learn the whole Linux process of building a system, and they have a great wiki to explain everything in different tutorials out there. And you start configuration from the start of installing your system. You know, you got a Debian Ubuntu, you have to remove stuff and then add your stuff if you don't want it. With Arch, you don't have to, no removal process because nothing's there, right? You build your system from scratch. And I think that's really good for learning. It gives me customization. I just have to invest time in exploring what works for me, right? I make backups of a, a base system and install things in a different way and what I like. Moving on, let's, let's see why Arch Linux is, you know, why I use it, right? I learn a lot more about Linux than any other operating system because I'm using the terminal more. You know, I'm learning the command line, which is very, very important. You know, I'm customizing from the beginning to suit my needs. I'm not removing anything. I'm just configuring and installing. I'm not wasting time, really. I get the latest tools and packages, specifically for hacking, definitely. But that can also be a bad and good thing relating to breaking your system because getting the latest stuff doesn't always mean it, it will work on your system, right? But it's always good to break your system. You should break your system. You know, definitely keep backups, but breaking your system is great because you learn how to fix it and that's, you learn how the system works, what things cause stuff to crash, you know, how an application just totally broke your system and wiped everything you can learn from that application and do that on a different computer, if you have permission, of course. <laughs> but I have more freedom with Arch Linux, you know, with installing stuff. I understand, you know, when an application does before installing and running it, because I obviously don't want to break my system. You know, I can run Windows, Mac, and different Linux operating systems on my Arch Linux. And you can do this with other Linux operating system. You can do it with Win Windows and Mac. But with Arch, I feel I have more power in customization relating to virtualization. And they do have Wine, which is a Windows emulator. I could just run Windows applications, simple as that, and have my own C drive. And I'm in control of everything that happens on my system. You know, I don't have any automatic updating. I don't have stuff. It's like, you need this. I can use any version I want. I can use any different version of Arch Linux or an application, different kernel. I can do whatever I want to this system. And that's what I want you know, my system to do. And I learned more from it. So that's basically why I use Arch. I fell in love with it. It's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me loving you know, really an operating system. Right? I usually just love the security aspect of it. But now I'm... I'm now inclined towards customization of, you know, Linux and figuring out different things. And hacking, being a hacker is just knowledge on a computer, right? How much knowledge do you have? And I still have Windows, right? I have Windows on virtualization. I don't have them for my system anymore. I moved everything to Arch. But I can still run Windows and do stuff that I need on Windows and learning the security aspect of Windows and different Linux operating systems. But moving on here, most people want the truth. And the truth is, no operating system will make you a better hacker. 
and that is 100% true. It doesn't matter about the toolbox you have on your system, it matters about the toolbox you have in your head, right? Because you can make anything work for you, right? You can hack a Windows, a Mac, make a Hackintosh, different Linux operating systems, mix some together, take features from different parts of operating systems, and make it work for you. And that's the most important part, right? So having a certain operating system on your computer will not make you a better hacker. But moving on here to the opinion of pen test OS right like Kali Linux backtrack it was once called you have backbox black arch cyborg parrot OS I've tried them all and those don't make you a better hacker either it actually made me kind of worse because I used it in the wrong way right space was constantly wasted on unnecessary applications I don't need I spent the longest time you know trying to figure out Black Arch, right? Because I was really into Arch Linux. It was like, oh, they have an Arch Linux hacking distribution. It has 1,337 tools. And that's incredible. That's a massive amount of tools in which I will never use 95% of them. What a waste of space. And some of them are so terrible that you can't even use them, right? And there are very good ones in there that are already configured for you, installed, right from the start but you don't learn anything from it right but there is good for this there is good I do have Kali Backbox Black Arch etc I do have these ISOs on my computer I do have them set up on virtualization because when I hear about a new application or something that's on there already installed and configured I just want to know how it works right I want to know how it feels. I don't want to go through the installation, then configure everything, and then realize the application is the worst application ever coded in history. No, I just want to know from the start, right? So it's very good on that aspect. It's a good starting place, right? You just want to test out the applications and then install them. You can take unique features from each of these operating systems because they're free and open source and implement them in your own way that suits you. Right, because Kali Linux suits the creators, the developers, a hundred percent. But it might not suit you. It might suit an eighty or ninety, but you want to work for that a hundred percent. So that's why, again, I think Arch Linux is very, very easy to give you that a hundred percent. But you can get that from any other operating system. Remember that. But thanks again for watching, guys. Um, request if you have a request, anything. If you want to, you know me to clarify anything I said email or comment below I might make a separate video for these things I will be doing tutorials on installing these different operating systems setting up your hacking lab I have tons of stuff planned guys so stay tuned we're gonna get into actually like hacking and every all that fun stuff get get rid of the PowerPoints and everything I just had to get the basis stuff out of the way um, so we're gonna get started with some fun stuff so subscribe for more peace guys